All right, folks, this is going to be about asses and bases. I just want to give you a quick introduction. Now, you already should have kind of an understanding about the idea of aqueous solutions, the idea of a solute within a solvent. So in particular, we want to focus on the idea of what an acid is versus what a base is. So one of the things that we should understand is, number one, the properties of an acid. And the properties of an acid, number one thing is that they have a sour taste to them, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, literally what they used to do, ladies and gentlemen, long, long ago is they literally used to taste stuff and thank God we don't have to do that now. But yes, they have a sour taste to them and um, acids will change the color of an acid base indicator as well as some acids react with metals to release hydrogen. This is why we have switched most of our plumbing, meaning our drain lines in new homes, into things that are more... Um, non-reactive to acids such as plastics, okay, ABS plastic in particular. And then acids will react with bases to produce water and salt. Salt is a fancy term for ionic compounds, ladies and gentlemen, okay, all right. And so, um, and acids are fantastic conductors of electricity. This is why we find it in batteries, okay, uh, well, car batteries. Bases, on the other hand, uh, bases are bitter. I tend to remember them by, by just sheer alliteration. So bases are bitter in taste. Um, they will change the color of an acid base indicator. Um, now, the interesting thing about bases is that they do feel slippery, okay, when they are in dilute solutions. And this is actually what gives uh, all this stuff called soap a uh, nice little slippery feel to it because most soaps are basic. Okay. Um, they will produce, uh, when reacting with a acid, uh, produce salts, again, fancy term for ionic compound, and water. And bases do conduct electric current, okay, meaning they're good electrolytes. So I'm hoping you recognize that between the two of these properties of acids and bases that there are some similarities. And the three similarities are they do change the color of indicators, they are great electrolytes, and they both react with each other. They literally counteract each other to form salt, uh-huh, 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 an ionic compound, and water. And for those who don't, you know, H2O, okay? All right, dihydrogen monoxide. Now, how do we recognize if we have an acid or a base? The easiest way that we're gonna do that is by looking at what it is made of, what it is, what, what what is present and the big thing is is if we are looking at what is called the Arrhenius's definition of an acid or base we just want to be able to recognize that it produces hydrogen ions in solution okay now these hydrogen ions can be in the form of H plus or H3O plus okay and ooh, ooh, another way to be able to tell whether it's an acid is that it will have hydrogen in the front. So it says HCl, this is hydrochloric acid. Or we can also have HC2H3O2, which, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is this stuff called vinegar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Vinegar, all right? The stuff that you actually put on maybe salads or maybe you just drink for fun. I don't know, I don't know. But it is a weak acid and it is safe. Hydrochloric, mm -mm, not so much, not so much. Bases, on the other hand, contain hydroxide, which means that they're going to have OH negative associated with. So you will see that we have sodium hydroxide is an example of a base, or calcium hydroxide is another example of a base. Note, note, notice this, all right? We got hydrogen in the front, all right? That makes it an acid. We have hydroxide in the back, which makes it a base, okay? Now, hmm. Interesting how it is that this produces H plus, and when this is dissolved in water, it produces OH minus. Do you think that the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide are going to be attracted to each other? Oh, yeah, they are, and they form this stuff called H2O. Hmm, sounds like water. And what's left over is a salt, such as sodium and chloride. Ah, an ionic compound. Well, and what we typically refer to as salt. Now, how do we recognize the strength of an acid? Now, the acids vary in strength. They're either strong or they're weak, okay? It's almost like a, an all or nothing kind of thing going on here. And so the way that we are gonna be recognizing whether something is a strong acid or weak acid is by looking at the chemical equation. And what you will notice is that the arrow goes in one direction. Do 
damn it, Zane. Sorry. Sorry, I digress, all right? But if the arrow only points in one direction, that lets you know that it, ladies and gentlemen, is a strong acid, meaning 100% of it is the product. There is 0% of the, ladies and gentlemen, oh, having trouble, all right? 0% of the reactants remaining, okay? Everyone got that? So the idea is that it is a strong acid because it produces a ridiculous amount of the acid component, such as the hydronium that is located here, okay? On the other hand, a weak acid, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Oh, sorry, sorry, pictures. We have pictures to describe this. So if this is the acid that we were starting with, ladies and gentlemen, we would end up with this as our products here, okay? Notice, notice, there is no column, all right, that is here, that is purple. No, mm -mm, there's nothing, nothing, zero. Mm -mm, it is 100% this, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, the 100% uh, of the product, okay? 100% of the product. A weak acid, on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, is one that uh, produces less than 5% of the actual product. And the way that we recognize that it's weak is we will see, oh, an arrow going in two directions, okay? So that means that less than 5%, less than 5%, ladies and gentlemen, is the product, and greater than 95%, ladies and gentlemen, is still left as the reactant. For those of you who don't like words, there are pictures, okay? And so in this picture here, what you will notice is that we started out with our acid and we still have a ton of the acid left over once it has done its little thing with water and we are left with a small amount of the acid and its conjugate, okay? And again, notice the arrows are going in two directions here, okay? So that's how we recognize that it is a weak acid. Okay? This is why you can consume stuff like vinegar or ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, all right? Or you can even uh, have things such as citric acid, you know, lemons and uh, oranges and limes, all right? And we can use it as a preservative to make sure that little things like bacteria don't grow in our food. All right. So I am hoping you've heard of this thing called pH, okay? This is measuring the power of the hydrogen. Now, when you drink water, this is what's actually happening. Water is reacting with water to form, oh no, an acid and a base. You are drinking an acid and a base. Eh, kinda, okay? Notice that the arrow is going in two directions, which means that this is definitely, ladies and gentlemen, less than 5%. Everyone got that? Less than 5% and is greater than 95% water that you are consuming. Now, what this means is the, is the process is, happens very, very little in water, which if we recognize the actual amount, meaning measuring quantitatively, <laughs> whoa, okay, quantitatively the amount of these two acids and bases, they're very, very small, and they happen to be, huh, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, and this is called molarity, all right? Now, I swear, I didn't make this up, but it's measuring the moles over the volume, okay? Now, but notice the number here, huh, 7, hmm, 7, hmm, pH, huh, what is neutral, uh, what is the neutral pH, what pH, I've heard of 7, what is that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, a neutral solution, all right, of a, uh, of, 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 of a substance, right, that is an acid, has a pH of seven, okay? Um, in order for it to be an acid, it has to have a pH of less than seven, and in order for it to be a base, it needs to have a pH of greater than seven, okay? Don't worry about that. What I need you to make sure you understand is this, and you're gonna look at this and go, oh my gosh, what is this? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the pH, okay? And notice that they are whole number values that we have here, all right? This was just to make it easier for everybody. But here's what I want you to notice. Notice that the concentration here related to the pH, so if we have a 0.1 concentration of hydrogen ion, it's a pH of one. But notice, if we go to a pH of, for example, four, that the, uh, the amount of hydrogen ion drops significantly. And what that means, it literally is uh, 1,000 times, ladies and gentlemen, 
less powerful in the amount of hydrogen present. 1,000 times for just a small pH change, which we're going to just say 1 to 4. Okay? That's what I want to make sure that you understand. So a single change in pH going from 1 to 2 is a 10-fold difference in the amount of hydrogen ions that are present. Okay? This is just a quick throwdown on the idea of what an acid and a base is.